My name is Kathy Lockhart. I'm the Assistant Director for Fisheries and Marine Resources Management in Turks and Caicos. Um, this was actually a project that was done and funded through what we call Res. Um, there was Jimmy um, Van Rin um, from Wild Science, um, R. Austin and A. Littlewood from the Joint Nature Conservation as well as T. Henry and myself from the Department of Fisheries and Marine Resources Management um, that had worked on this particular project. Make sure that's going right. Okay, so to give you a little bit of background, um, our um, Turks and Caicos uh, Queen Con Fisheries, and um, we have had some difficulty in doing stock assessments in the most recent past. Um, a lot of that had to do with the difficulty um, with obtaining a TAC, total allowable catch, based on a modified Schaefer model or computer modeling. Uh, there were also additional restrictions as far as um, some additional um, legislation um, changes that we had done that reduced the um, total allowable catch. And of course, um, COVID-19 played a big part um, in what we were having available during our stock assessments. So how we normally had done our stock assessments was with some independent data, um, which would come from uh, underwater visual surveys. But of course, like every other country, there are definitely financial restrictions and our capacity with the size within our department, um, having the capability of being able to collect some of this information. We also, during our stock assessments, would use dependent data, and that was usually information that we um, received from our class A answers um, for what they that. Now, we do know that there was some unreported local occurring as well, um, which again enhanced the problems that we were having in a, a good stock assessment that was occurring. So, um, a couple of years ago, we discovered what was called Resin Big, which is the Resilience, Sustainable Energy, and Marine, and Marine Biodiversity Fund. And um, we were able to obtain funding through this. Through this to um, determine a consumption survey um, for the Queen Conch itself, as well as conduct some underwater visual studies and underwater video tows. Now, this particular project, or what I'm gonna be describing here, is looking at these underwater video tows and how we were able to collect some information um, from those. So there were two methodologies that we compared. The first one, a towed video array that you see on the left, and the diagram below is um, the setup and organization of that particular video. And on the right, you'll see what we call the C drone pro. So we're comparing the two different um, types of equipment, um, the ease of setting them up, the cost, the feasibility of that, um, the training capacity, and all of that type of information. Um, but what you can see on the right, the C Drone Pro is a pretty compact housing um, that had one basically unit that we would be deploy and retrieve. Um, the video tow or the, the towed video array was something that we actually had to create. And so diagram there, um, it was made from PVC pipe, um, hose clamps, zip ties, lasers, and a um, and what would happen is that be towed behind a boat. So if you can see in the diagram, we would have the boat, it would be deployed, and then um, these cylinders that are on the side of the towed video array would be filled with water as a counterbalance. And we would have a chain at the bottom um, that would pull, pull the weight of the video array down. So when we would deploy that, it would actually have a counterbalance to be about a meter off the bottom of the floor of the, the, the sea. And we would basically have that being brought behind the boat and we wouldn't actually have it underway. It would just be at drift and then we would have GPS marks that we would actually mark the, that it would actually flow from. So we were able to actually um, view um, a particular transect location. So in our methods analysis, how we actually compared the two, um, on the left, the towed video array. And you can notice that there's like kind of a line with two circles. Those two circles, they're very difficult to see, but those are the two laser points that we would have attached to the video array. 
And um, based on that, if it was a meter off the floor and um, between those two laser marks, we were able to get exactly the transect um, coverage that we were looking for. In the photo to the right, that is basically where we have the video array out first, and then we were comparing with the C drone behind it. So we were actually able to compare the two for picture quality, ease of use, that sort of thing. So our results basically that came in um, comparing the two, um, we used different criteria. The first criteria that we compare and what we noticed with the toad video array is that um, the building of the unit um, took quite a bit of skill um, practice in um, cutting the, the right sizes of the PVC, um, again, using the hose clamps, the, um, the zip ties, um, knowing to fill those, um, the length of chain, there was quite a bit in actual construction of it. But it was really a pretty low skill in order to operate it once we had it deployed, because again, would drift behind the boat. Compared to the C drone, where it was a really quick setup, um, as far as everything was in one housing unit, it would be deployed, dropped overboard, and then um, we would be able to use that under power. Now, with the C drone, ease of use was a little bit more high level skill to operate. What we noticed when we were actually conducting this is that um, our officers that do video games quite a bit were a little bit quicker on the uptake of how to use this as they'd use a tablet in order. Um, the portability of the two. So with a towed video array, there again were quite a few parts to assemble and quite a few different in order to put together in order to deploy it. So it usually was at least a two person deploy um, in order to get the video array put into the water. Now the C drone was pretty much, again, it's one house little unit. So it was quite quick for one person to be able to deploy that off of the boat. With the durability, the towed video array um, obviously had no moving parts, so it made it a little bit easier for um, when, when transport that it, things wouldn't break off so easily or it wouldn't malfunction. And with the video array, um, it would, because we would fill the canisters, it would sink quite quickly towards the bottom. Um, so it became subsurface quite quickly. With the C drone, that of course, even though it's housed in one unit, there are quite a few different moving parts to that, which include the different motor, propellers, the videos, things like that. Um, additionally, that particular sea drone, uh, what would happen is it would stay at the surface for quite a period able to deploy it down under power. And so there was always the potential that there could be sun issues with that or even entanglement within the one cord that we would use um, in case we would, we would have an issue to pull the drone back to us. So it always had like a safety cord. With maintenance, the towed video array, again, the, the repairs were quite easy because it was non-moving parts, usually PVC replacement of a zip tie. The most difficult part for maintenance with that is the drop camera that's attached to that. And that drop camera allows the, the, the person that is in charge to be able to see the bottom type, how far it is off the bottom if something's coming. Now, when I say we did have one instance where um, it was a bit of a delay in retrieval of the video array, it got ca caught on um, a sub C and what ended up happening was it actually stretched the cable and cracked the cable. So there was a bit of difficulty with the camera as far as maintenance goes with that. Um, with the C Drone Pro, what we found is that if there were any occur with that, um, it would take time as we don't um, mass produce those type, that, that type of equipment here in the Turks and Caicos, it would take some time to and then have it shipped so it could actually delay your time frame as far as being able to do any of these surveys. Additionally, as a C drone, when you purchase it, it usually comes under warranty. Warranties only last for a certain period of time. So if you've used it outside the warranty expiration, there could be additional that maintenance. Um, we also compared as a criteria was the cost of the different equipment. And the towed video 
expensive. Um, the most expensive part was probably the drop camera and a GoPro, um, which cost around $3,700. But the PVC pipe, the glue, all of those things you can usually find in your local hardware store. So that part was relatively inexpensive. Um, compared to the C drone, where C drones can range in price anywhere between a thousand to fifty thousand or plus, um, this particular C drone pro that we purchased was about almost eight thousand um, dollars. But if you wanted to have the extra GPS tracking, there's a lot of different extra programs that you can add on to those that the price go up. So um, the drone that we purchased, we start off with about the 18,000 and then purchase the GPS tracking, which costs about or $7,300 additional. Now, when we think about how type of impacts that we could have environmentally from these two different types of um, um, projects, um, the first one with the is, um, again, we have a chain that's on the back that and that does actually drag across the sea bottom. It leaves like a small little trail. Um, so there is risk of that entanglement. Now, how we actually connected that chain to the video array is through um, a fishing line. Hold it, but um, light enough that if it did get caught up on something that it would pop, we would lose the chain, could go back to the tree, but it shouldn't interrupt of, um, habitat that's down below. Compared to the sea drone, where the sea drone, again, it's man-powered um, through, um, through jets, that sort of thing, and it was very unlikely for that to have any type of interaction with the habitat. Compared a few other items with this, one being the power source. Um, if we're not going to be able to do underwater visual surveys through scuba because of the depth usually, um, we need to come up with a way in order to be able to use one of these two items. And both of them would have to have a power source. Now, with the towed video array, the drop camera did have a video source as well as power. And so that had to come from the vessel rather than in the water. Um, so we had to make sure that our cable was long enough um, in order to power the item. With the C Drone Pro, um, that one was actually run through batteries, and it's a tablet that you work um, up on your boat. And with the batteries, we had to find that there were multiple batteries that we had. Most of the batteries would last about three hours. Um, so if you were out for an entire day, say an eight, you have to have multiple batteries. So when you brought the drone back on your boat, you would be able to switch out the batteries. Um, with transect routing, um, again, when we're doing underwater visual surveys, we usually lay out a transect. Not possible with these two. So with a video array, what we would do is we would drift with the conditions, um, which was usually very slow, and we would be able to use GPS tracking in order to determine exactly the location that we went. Um, um, but again, it was with a drift, um, so it was usually in one direction. Um, with the sea drone, again, we needed to program, and that program is actually quite costly in order to set a transect routing. So you could purchase the program, set the routing exactly where you want it to go, rather than you having to maneuver each, um, the, the, the height of it or the depth of it and the direction, you could actually use this particular program. But again, it's above and beyond the initial cost that we would have. There was also GPS tracking with the towed video array. We would use a handheld GPS. We would mark at the start with a timestamp. And then um, at the end with the final waypoint, we would again timestamp that. Back, we would have that marked with the video that came off of the GoPro. So we would be able to tell the exact start and finish of each of those effects. With the C Pro, um, the, the C drone, we would also have to have that with a GPS locator. Again, that's a program that would have to be purchased. And that, again, is quite costly. Finally, what we were comparing um, was the video quality. Um, and what we had noticed was that the video quality on the towed video array was the quality that came with the GoPro that we had attached to it. And what we had purchased was, of course, the latest and greatest. Um, so we had a 20 megapixel um, for that particular GoPro, which gave a very good 
compared to the C drone that was at a two megapixel for that camera. And down below, you can see two photos. The one that's on the left that is a little bit more blurry, that is actually the one from the C drone. And the one that's on the right that shows a little more clarity, that one is with the Toad video array. Additionally, since we were trying to make sure that we kept within a transect line or transect area, um, on the Toad video array, we mounted two lasers. Um, they were mounted one meter apart, and again, um, how the array was set, it was to be one meter off the floor, so it would show um, one full square meter um, in width. Um, and as you could see in that previous video, it's difficult to see those two laser points, so you really have to be paying attention when you're going through your videos. Um, with a C drone, there was a mounted 10 centimeter apart grid overlay, um, and that was required in order to be able to um, come up with a perspective of how much area you were covering. And again, you know, that has additional costs. There was a depth lock as well. Um, again, our video array, it was buoyancy with the chain and um, the filled water tubes. While the C drone, we'd have to have a Doppler velocity logger and software that was with that. So you can see there was quite a bit more cost that came in with a drone versus the video array. Um, basically, the reason why we compared these two is because we know that we need to be able to do a better assessment of our queen conch species. And we often do that with an underwater video or underwater visual surveys. Um, as I'm sure everyone is well aware, you have a lot of restrictions with that when it comes to the weather itself, much less the depth and your depth time when you're on um, scuba usually. So we try to look for an alternative to find our deeper locations. And both this video array as well as the sea drone would be able to go down between anywhere between 10 and 30 meters in depth in order to be able to check and see what is there. Um, so we wanted to compare and figure out which of the two was best for us. What we determined for us is and the training to be able to do this, that the video array was more effective for us um, in our short time frame that we were trying to collect this information. So feasibility, it was there, it was available. Um, there was not much training. We had um, a scientific officer who was well-trained in being able to monitor the drop camera to be able to pull the camera or the video rate up when she needed to. Um, the cost, again, it was fairly cheap. Um, we did have a couple of issues with basic maintenance um, that we were able to repair fairly quickly at a fairly cheap price. Um, the, the most costly was the um, cable for the particular camera. Um, but again, the cable versus uh, replacing the entire drone, it was quite a bit cheaper than a drone. Um, and then the video quality was one of the biggest kickers. Able to see clearly if this was a live conch, if it was a dead conch. Um, so um, we wanted to be able to stop and see things very, very clearly. What our video tow, that um, GoPro, just gave a better picture quality. Now, each country, if they're interested, decision themselves um, but some of the things that we noticed with this is um, weather conditions can play a very high factor in using the video tow um, again we go with the current so if you have strong can move a bit quicker which again it can actually start to pull the array instead of drifting and if it does that it tends to pull the array a little higher in the water column so you have, still have to have really good weather conditions to go out and use this um, vessel issues would come up with if you're using the video you have to have that online battery source in some way in order to be able to um, use the drop camera to see what's going on and then capacity we definitely had, you know, a scientific officer that was amazing at this, that took a lot of time to learn how to use both styles. Um, but when we went out into the field, because of the, um, the, the currents, the waves, um, and what was going on with not having a couple of those programs, um, she became an expert in how to use the video array and was able to um, inform the captain and the co-captain if she needed to remove the video array um, to go across a reef if it was there and then drop back down. 
Um, we have the data from this. What we have done um, from this particular project was we were able to do 100 underwater um, video or no, underwater visual surveys and 100 video toes. And um, finished part of it. We are finishing up the video toes, going through all of the footage, um, marking down the the conch that we're finding. And we're hoping that this information will allow us to see the deeper sites and get a better representation of how much conch and the biomass that we have um, out on our Kiko. Um, so again, it will be up to you to decide if you're interested in either one of these types, um, which one's most cost effective, training effective, and that sort of thing. And that's what I have. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. I have two questions. Um, the deep water survey methods that you described, mm -hmm. is there any literature or did you do any exploration of how the results compare mm -hmm. to the shallow water surveys in order to detect whether there are any biases? Mm -hmm. Forgive me if you mentioned it, I, I had to step away for a moment. And I had oh. another question, sorry to interrupt, just one other question. Let me just pause it quickly, and that is, in the Bahamas, we are planning to conduct deep water surveys as well. One of our constraints is that there are such extensive grounds to survey. What informed where you selected sites to um, survey? Thank you very much, Kathy. Okay. Um, so the first one, there actually, um, this project that we worked on was along with um, me, um, who had created and developed this video array. And um, he had um, conducted the video array in comparison with underwater visual surveys. I'm pretty sure it was in St. Lucia along with in Australia. And um, he does have a couple of papers that have been published on the comparisons of those. Um, the drone, um, unfortunately, we were not able to utilize that in comparison underwater um, visual surveys. Um, we just kind of compared the, the ease of it, the training of it um, for the, the, the video drone. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have any documentation about the drone in a comparison of that versus like an underwater visual survey or any biases there. Um, as far as your second question for locations, what we had done was our bank obviously is quite a bit smaller than the Bahamas. Um, but we worked with commercial fishermen um, and spoke with them about areas um, that they knew had them versus those that they knew that they that there was not conch. And we actually striated the the the, the Caicos Bank um, and stratified the Caicos Bank so that we could come up with how many surveys and how many um, video tours were done in each of the locations. Um, so that's how we ended up developing that. We came up with a total of 100 um, video toes and 100 um, underwater visual surveys. Um, in the past, surveys before, um, I think that was in 2000, 2001. Um, so for the area of the bank, it covered it, um, including some new locations that fishermen had developed um, that would have been on our north side that we hadn't known that. Hope that answers your questions. Yes, thank you very much. 